I had a good friend do me a favor the other day and they had mentioned before about wanting to get a laser and wanting me to show them how to, wanted to know if I would show them how to use it once they got it. Well, since they did me such a huge favor, I decided I was going to purchase a laser and uh, give them. And since I was spending the money out of my pocket, I got to decide which one I was going to get. I went ahead and I purchased this TS2 by Two Trees because now that I have experience with the lasers, I feel that this had some features that a lot of the other lasers don't have. So all your diode lasers are going to do relatively the same thing. They're going to engrave and they're going to cut. Now, the higher wattage laser you get, the faster you can engrave and get a good burn, and also the deeper you can cut and the faster you can cut. Now, I have done some fabulous engravings with a five watt laser. It just cannot cut anything very thick. Now, this is a 10 watt, and it has a lot of unique features that even my X tool that cost significantly more doesn't have. So let me go over all the unique features that this laser has that I don't have on my other lasers. I'll show you what I really like about it and I can show you a couple things I don't like about it. We can start off right here in the back of the machine. You have this stepper motor that's a pass through. So this one motor goes through both sides and it pulls on belts on both sides, which I feel will make this gantry stay nice and parallel and just run a whole lot smoother. That's something I don't have on either one of my other two lasers. While we're looking at the back of the machine, you see how this, most of the machines have this 20 by 20. The X-Tool does have a thicker side rails the way it's made, um, but the majority of the machines are made out of a 20 by 20. However, this one has got a 20 by 40 across the top and it's got a solid bar across the bottom and it's the same on the front. With it having that solid bar across the bottom, I can slide my honeycomb bed up here and then I can use my lines to make sure that I stay parallel with the gantry. You know, that's one of those things you never want to have to burn something and it be crooked. So this makes it very easy to make sure that you're parallel with the gantry because you've got a positive stop. Whether it's a cutting board you know, I can take and set my cutting board in here, and if I want to come back, I can just cut a small strip and put in there and slide it up to where it's going to be sure that I am parallel with my gantry. Another feature that I really like is that this comes with your drag chains, and that way, you know, it keeps all your hose, got your air hose in here, it's got all your wires and everything's nice and neat. You know, I hate the wires everywhere. The uh, x -Tool did a real good job of cable management. Most of these other little lasers, you know, the wires are just hanging out and flopping all over the place. I really like, this is a very strong, well-built, it's got metal uh, attachment points on this drag chain, so that's a very solid, and uh, makes it just look a whole lot nicer, and I feel it's gonna make it function a whole lot better. And, here on the front of the laser, again, this is the only company that I know that has this large viewing area that has this laser glass here to where you can look through and watch the laser burn if you don't have the uh, glasses on. Now, it's always recommended to wear your glasses, but many times if you're doing a long burn and this is sitting by, you can come in and you can take a quick peek through here. And then also, there is the same laser glass right that goes around and it comes all the way down. So here's your, your motherboard is inside of here. It's all pretty much in case, got some air holes. Um, there's no power switch, uh, but you do have the safety shutoff, which is great. And so everybody's basically using this as a on off switch. You twist it and it comes up, you hear the laser coming on and then you push it down. You know, to me, that's more of an emergency stop, but this is what they're using for an on-off switch. You have your alarm right here. So you've got a vis visual and an audio alarm for your flame detector and your tilt sensor. Almost all of these lasers have flame detector and tilt sensors. Something I really liked about this one here is they did send a little cover and showed where the actual flame uh, detector is. 
And so you can cover that up because I've had instances where in the evening where I'm set up at, if the light comes shining through the window, the sun can trigger the flame sensor and kill your cut. So if you know that that uh, is going to happen, or if you're outside, I have taken this outside because I wanted to be in my shop and didn't want all the fumes in here. And then the sun would trigger the uh, flame sensor. It has a little cover that comes with it. And you just stick that little cover right over the flame sensor. And then you don't have to worry about that. All right, so something that I really loved about the longer was that you're able to just use your SD card here and you know print right from the card. This has a card and it does have Wi-Fi built in. It's the ESP32 card if you're familiar with those where you can log in either through a laptop or on your cell phone wirelessly and connect with it. However, there is not a, a screen. There's no display. Well, in the book, they were nice enough to show you exactly which motherboard. And they're using the MakerBot board or MakerBase board. And it is a really good board. And it's got the connections here for the touch screen. And they sell a touch screen for, I think it's $39. You know, uh, I don't know, it's $40. Why didn't they just put it in? And I guess they're trying to keep the price down. But I've had the ones with that touch screen board. And that really will take this up to the next level. So if it was me and I was going to keep this machine and not give it away, I would definitely get that touch screen and that would just make this much more user friendly. So this is the number one feature that I think all lasers should have that 90% of them don't. So, all right, I'm gonna put this piece of board under here. I need to get my laser the correct distance away. All I have to do is come over here to the software, hit the button, you see it go down, it's got a little probe on the side, it's going to touch the wood, it recognizes where it's at and it's going to lift it up and this is the proper height for engraving, which you see there's a small gap underneath there but that's the largest gap there is. So if I was wanting to cut this, I can come over here and this, there's a button for say 8 millimeter cut, so it's going to come down and then it's going to rise up and then bring it back down so it's almost touching this little housing which is going to be the proper spacing from the laser if you were going to say cut eight millimeter wood however i find this can do a whole lot more than cut eight millimeter wood you see there's already a air nozzle built in it comes ready for air it doesn't come with the compressor but it has the hose already in the drag chain it's already got the nozzle, so this thing is comes equipped to run air. All right, so this is, in the book, they have a whole page of uh, your recommended settings for different materials, and it says for eight millimeter plywood, 100 by 100, it's 100 speed, 100% power, at one to two times. Well, that's a set at 100 and 100. I do have my air running, and I've got it set just to cut one time. And let's see, this is not necessarily plywood, but this is a solid piece of wood. And we'll see how well it does. Okay, so that took one minute and 24 seconds. So we can see there's some burning uh, around that line. That line doesn't look crisp, you know, like a laser line should be. Let's see. It did cut it all the way out, but you have charring. There was a little spot right there in its neck that didn't quite get. But you see that this charring around the outside here. Let's see if that gets focused in. But uh, you know, this is where it has burnt. You know, and actually kind of caught on fire and burnt. So this is how I would cut. You see it's going much faster. I'm running at 500 millimeters a minute, which is five times faster than what they recommend. But then I'm also going to run five passes. So in theory, it should come out to be about the same amount of time. We will see when it's finished. But then I believe it's going to get us a much smoother cut. Okay, look, so that is our cut. And on the software, it was exactly one minute and 24 seconds. So we've got the uh, one that we were cutting at 100 
millimeters. And then you see this one here, it's already just fallen out. So it is much smoother and the edge is a lot nicer. So as you can see, this was the 100 millimeters a minute at 100% power, one pass. This was 500 millimeters per minute, five passes. They both took exactly one minute and 24 seconds to cut out. But as you can see, one, the outside shape here is much smoother. The part on the edges here is a whole lot cleaner. You don't have as much burnt. Whereas with this one, you see it's, and both of these were running the same amount of air. And so it was not as smooth of a cut. You've got like charring, you know, the piece is charred. There's, you know, it's not a pretty looking piece. You know, I wouldn't want like this to be a puzzle part. Okay, so we've seen it would cut a piece of eight millimeter, but what about this? This is a 14.7, uh, 14.5. So this is a little over a half inch thick piece of uh, solid wood here. Okay, so we cut that piece of seven and a half millimeter at 500 millimeters a minute and we were using 100% power. Well, I'm cutting, I'm always cutting at 100% power. And this is 14 and a half, almost twice as thick. So what I've done is I've slowed it down to 400 millimeters a minute. So I'm just going 100 millimeters a minute slower. And then I'm doing a total of seven passes. And let's see how well that comes out and how long it takes. So another nice, clear, crisp image. And look at that, look at the edge of there. It doesn't even hardly look like it's burnt on the edge. And see, that's by going fast and uh, not you know, trying to go super slow and burning at one time. So this is 14 millimeters. And look how smooth that is. So, you know, even though it says it cuts uh, eight millimeters in one pass, you know, you do multiple passes. And also, let's not forget that this is just a 10 watt laser. So I've got this piece that's 18, a little over 18, almost 19 millimeters thick. This is a piece of poplar hardwood. So this is not some pine, this is actually a hardwood. You really shouldn't be cutting, well, I'm not saying you shouldn't, but a 10 watt diode is not really the best tool to cut three quarter inch hardwoods. However, let's see what'll happen if we do try to cut some three quarter inch hardwood. You know, cause that's what I'm always wondering about. Just what can you do with the machine? Now, it may not cut it as quick, you know, as a 20 or a 40 watt. If you're gonna be doing a lot of three quarter inch hardwoods, maybe you need to step up to a CO2 laser. Well, those are gonna be a couple of grand. Whereas this thing here, I was able to get it on sale for just a couple of hundred dollars. You know, you just can't beat the price uh, for the performance. And I'm telling you with that auto focus, that just makes it so easy. Now you have to remember to hit the button. If you don't remember to hit the button, obviously it's not gonna work. But if you hit that button, this thing has focused dead on every time for me. As you see, it's running a lot slower here and it's gonna take a little bit longer. But again, we're kind of trying to push to the limit of the machine. All right, see what happened here. Oh. Man, once again, that is three quarter inch hardwood with a 10 watt diode laser. Now this is a picture I like to use. I burnt this with this laser. Now it took almost an hour because this is about eight inches. But, you know, if you look closely at the detail, now this is just a piece of uh, underlayment I got from Home Depot. This isn't even the right kind of wood. But, you know, the wispy hairs and just the detail, you know, in the eyes and all. I just, I like this picture because, one, I'm a Gemini and this is a uh, Gemini. But, you know, you can see the detail in it. All right, so if you are not you know super familiar with these lasers 
go ahead and get you some of these uh, slate coasters or just some of these pieces of black slate they're pretty cheap on Amazon I'll link some in the description if you want and now this is smaller so we won't get as much detail but you can see just how fast this thing is running and we're going to print out that same little picture it's not going to have as much detail because I'm shrinking it from an 8 inch into a 2 inch so it kind of jumbles a lot of stuff up but just to see what this can do uh, and see what it looks like on some uh, slate tile so let's let this run and see what it looks like when it's done okay so that was uh, you can still see the detail you know once you uh, clean it off and um, put some clear on it that may have actually been a little bit too powerful all right so you can see this thing is printing is able to cut three quarter inch hardwoods I mean it's cutting eight millimeter one pass we're engraving it's doing everything like it should but it has this awesome auto focus this thing also is 450 millimeters most of the other ones are only 400 or less so it's got one of the bigger beds right out the box it's got nice big heavy extrusions it's very solid a lot more rigid filling than my other ones this thing you know is by it having the bottom you know i can either push up to the top or to the bottom and i can make sure that i am parallel with my gantry and that way when i'm lining stuff up it works great the only really flaw or not flaw but thing i wished is i wish that it had the touch screen on it but it's only 39 dollars and it's already got the board and everything set up for it i guess they're just trying to keep the price down by not including it and i guess a lot of people may not actually like that but i like the feature of having the touch screen and it makes it so much easier where you can load all your files especially if you have a file that you're going to be doing the same thing over and over again weeks later you can just have them on that card and then you can pop the card in hit the button on the screen and let it go to town and cut especially with the uh, lower wattage laser because if say we were wanting to do a hundred of these we could set it up to where it's got 20 or 30 of them on the bed at one time and it may take a couple hours to run but oh well you put it to run you go do something else and you come back later and it's finished you don't have to have a computer hooked up you just grab them off go hit on the screen rerun the same program again and it all you know works out great like that so if you have any critique for me because i definitely would like to get better at doing these reviews let me know or if you have any experience with this or if you have experience with other diode lasers leave it in the comments let me know what you think um, but for me out of all the ones i have this because i maybe because i came from 3d printing and we always have the z-axis with the 3d printing that i just don't understand why none of these laser companies use the stepper motor and with the uh little probe for the auto focus because that has been one of the biggest pains in the butt i've had with most other diode lasers so this thing here is 95 percent terrific and you know only thing would be better is if i had the uh, more powerful one so thanks for watching